Hi folks, in this Unreal Engine 5 tutorial, we're diving into the world of constraints in Sequencer, a powerful tool that unlocks limitless possibilities for animating and syncing objects in your scenes. To showcase this, I've created a vibrant robotic concert scene where the energy is electric, so let's jump right in and see how it's done. So let's start by taking a look at our sequencer. As you can see, the microphone is attached to the vocalist robot's hands, seamlessly sticking to it during the performance. However, something interesting happens in the middle of the sequence. The singer changes hands, and the microphone transitions smoothly from the right hand to the left. This might seem tricky to pull off, but with constraints in sequencer, it's not only possible, but also incredibly easy to set up. Now, let me switch to another sequencer and break down the process step by step, showing you exactly how this is done using constraints. Okay, now we're in a new sequencer without any constraints set up. The microphone is currently placed in the first position in the right hand, but as you can see, it's not attached to the singer's hand yet. Let's fix that. First, I'm gonna select the microphone and then I will change the mode to animation by pressing Shift A on the keyboard. While the mic is selected, I will create a new constraint. Before finalizing, I'll make sure that the maintain offset option is checked. This is important because maintain offset ensures that the microphone stays in its current relative position to the hand when the constraints is applied instead of snapping to the exact position of the hand's pivot point. The type of the constraint we choose is critical for the effect we want to achieve. In this case, I'm selecting a parent constraint because it allows the microphone to inherit both the position and rotation of the robot's hand. This ensures the microphone moves and rotates naturally along with the hand, creating a realistic interaction during the animation. Now with the microphone selected, I'm going to attach it to the robot's right hand. To do this, I will search for the specific bone we need, which in this case is the hand on the line R bone. Once selected, the microphone will be constrained to this bone and will follow the hand's movement seamlessly as if it's being firmly gripped by the robot singer. All right, now it is time to transition the microphone from the right hand to the left hand. To do this, I will first move the time slider right before the moment of the transition and set a key for the microphone at its current position and state. This ensures that everything is locked in place up to that moment. Next, I will manually position the microphone in the left hand. While the mic is selected, I will create another constraint, this time for the left hand. To do this, I'll repeat the process of selecting the robot and finding the hand on the line L bone to attach it to the left hand. Once this is done, I will deactivate the constraint for the right hand about 3 or 4 frames after the transition begins. This overlapping activation of constraints ensures a smooth transition as both hands momentarily influence the microphone for those few frames, allowing it to transfer naturally. Now as the microphone transitions, you'll notice an issue. There is a problem with rotation and transition. The microphone may rotate or move oddly and look unnatural during the transition and this is because the constraints are calculating the movement differently during the hand switch. And to fix this, I will open the curve editor and adjust the keyframes for the roll rotation as well as for the transitions along the X and Y axis. And this process lets me refine the motion to ensure a smooth and realistic handoff. Just keep in mind that if you're working with multiple constraints or switching constraints like this, these kinds of issues are common. It's important to know how to troubleshoot them using tools like the Curve Editor to make your transitions seamless and professional looking. And that wraps up our workflow on using constraints in Unreal Engine Sequencer. While it may take a bit of tweaking like addressing issues with rotation and transitions, it's definitely worth it to bring your animations to life with realistic details. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment your suggestions and questions. Be sure that I will answer to them. So take care of yourself. See you in the next videos.